All right, what about Sunday school and youth groups? Well, children that are 10 and under, of course, depending on the level of maturity, you have kids that are 10 that act like they're in their late teens. You have kids that are in their late teens that act like they're 10. <laughs> but usually a child under 10, it's good to teach them a little bit more basic instruction. They're young. They don't have the mind of an adult. They're not going to be able to understand a really in-depth sermon and, of course, the preacher to talk down to their level when there are adults present. You know, it's better to have a little Sunday school, so to speak, not in the Bible, I realize, but uh, it's not a sin to teach young children, okay? That is something that I think is perfectly fine and acceptable. However, when a child gets to 10 years of age, usually, I think it's good for them to go and be part of the adult service at that point. As far as youth group is concerned, I would say mm, I'd avoid a youth group. Okay, there again, there's a lot of worldly compromise where churches feel that they have to give the teenagers, the teens of their group, they have to give them the world in order to bring them in. And, and if we don't give them what they want, then they won't come. Well, then don't let them come. Okay, and, and it's, it's kind of ironic too because teenagers oftentimes want the truth. And, and what the adults think that they won't accept the teenager, teenagers a lot of times actually want to hear it. I, I know myself personally, I was involved in a youth group at the church where I grew up, and it was just miserable. It was just sin and just teenagers messing around and, and doing things, and it'd sneak off into the woods, you know, by the church, and it was a problem. It was a very serious problem, and, and I don't agree with it, but I remember there was one night where a guy came and he was talking to us about the occult about Satanism and witchcraft and things, and I was just blown away. You know, I wanted the truth, but the youth group was constantly trying to meet our needs, our worldly needs. Let's play games. Let's go do fun things. Let's be cool here. No. If you have teenagers as part of your house church, they need to be involved in the same activities as the adults. Don't give them ministry things. Don't have them preaching or things like that. They are novices. Okay, there are certain things. It's good to have knowledge of the Bible, but you have to go through some things before you can really preach. And I don't agree with teenage preachers. Okay, I don't believe that there is such a thing as a good, legitimate teenage preacher. Uh, anybody that gets into preaching when they're in their teens, they're going to get messed up. Okay, you need to experience life a little bit. Jesus Christ didn't start ministry till he was 30. Why should you be any different? All right, so, but as far as what do you do with teenagers? You have a bunch of teenagers at your house church. What do you do with them? Well, you teach them, okay? Teach them the Bible, teach them doctrine, and teach them how to win souls. Take them out street preaching. They want an adrenaline rush? Take them street preaching. <laughs> That's a good adrenaline rush, believe me. Take them door to door. Take them out, hey, let's, let's put some tracks out. You know, the adrenaline of going through a, a some place, a shopping mart or you know mall or something like that, and putting tracks out. There's some adrenaline there too. Okay, it's not illegal, but you're going to get people mad when when they see you doing it, and even just witnessing to people. There's another adrenaline thing. You know, take the teenagers out. They'll enjoy it. And I've had teenagers. I've had discussions with teenagers, and you talk hard straight facts with them as much as they can handle and a lot of times they're there going I've never heard this before this is amazing this is fascinating they want the truth but churches have been misled into thinking that they have to give them the world and you don't you're only going to mess them up that way okay no youth groups that's my recommendation and, of course, it's fine for them to have friends. I'm not saying that teenagers should be isolated from other people their age and whatever. No, they can have friends, but the adults need to be the ones teaching the children, the youth. Uh, 1 Timothy 3.6, of course, says, Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into condemnation of the devil. I've seen that happen. You give a teenager too much responsibility, scripturally ministering and stuff like that, 
they get lifted up with pride and they fall into condemnation of the devil. So uh, watch out for that. Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. I want to read that very quickly here. It says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, uh, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all th things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is on the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to speak of you. If you're an older Christian, you need to act your age. You need to be sober. Okay, One of the pr best things that you can give to the youth, to teenagers, if you're older, is give them your experiences, your mistakes that you have made. But if you're acting like a fool, if you're acting like you're crazy or something, acting all wild and out of control, they're not going to respect you. You need to act your age and say, young man, young lady, when I was your age, I was doing the same thing that you're doing right now, and this is what happened to me. And be honest with them. And a lot of times they'll respect you more for that than if you try to be worldly and try to be hip. Okay, that's not what we're supposed to do. Um, the older are to instruct the younger. And they're to instruct them not only from the Bible, but in manner of life. Okay, in the way you handle things, in relationships and everything else. The older are to instruct the younger, but the older can't instruct the younger if they're acting like teenagers. Okay, act your age. That's very important. Don't waste time on youth groups. Give them the truth. That's what they really want. All right? Important to remember that. Okay, next section, we're going to talk about the two ordinances that you should have as part of your house church. The first being communion. Okay, this is done in remembrance of what Jesus Christ did. Uh, you can do it a few times a year. Again, that's up to you to decide whether you should do it every month, every other month, or two times a year, or once a year. It's up to you. Uh, it is symbolic. Keep that in mind. It's a time to judge your own sins and to remember what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Okay, It's important. Uh, we're not going to cover that much more. But uh, you don't need, if you are starting a house church and you are the pastor, uh, you are the, the overseer of the flock, you don't need some kind of special magical powers, Catholic mumbo-jumbo transubstantiation. No. You just get some grape juice and some kind of bread, unleavened bread if you want to do it that way, and conduct the service. Read the verses there in uh, Corinthians. There's really not much to it. It's just to be a reverent time where you judge your sins and you remember what Jesus Christ did on the cross. The second ordinance, ordinance number one, communion. Ordinance number two, believer's baptism. Don't baptize babies. They have no say in the matter. Okay, Baptism is to be done to adults to um, after they get saved as a symbol of their death, the old man dying, and being raised as a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's what baptism is for. And those are the only two ordinances that you should have. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> 